one of the most eagerly awaited higher education games in years. It is at the Dub Arena in Belfast and it features that squad of players there. They are the visitors here to local rivals and it's all about local pride tonight. That is the Ulster University, previously widely known as Jordanstown and even the Poly if you want to go way back. And look at that panel. They give us 40 names. Those lads are coming here tonight and they are going to aim to beat Queens in this uh, Electric Ireland Sigerson Cup first round game. That is the game tonight. There's a back door, but it doesn't matter. Tonight's all about local pride. Nobody wants to lose tonight. This is as good as it gets in higher education colleges in Queens and Jordanstown. Well, they go back a long, long way. And we've one of the men who played in those games many years ago, Mark McCartan with me. Mark, have a build it up, right? Oh yeah, look, th these games are, are unbelievable. Not only these guys have went to the same schools, they play for the same clubs. You'll probably find the guys are actually living in the same houses in around the Holy Lands and all. Uh, this is all about pride tonight. You know, whoever wins or loses, if they do go out for a drink later on, they'll be in the same bars and they'll be meeting each other. And it is all about pride and this will be do your day tonight. You mentioned Holy Lands and a lot of people around here know what that means. But there's people abroad, shall we say, who are wondering, what is he talking about Holy Lands? <laughs> but it's just the name that's given to where most of the students live. Yeah, it's just, it's just one of the student areas in Belfast. There's other ones as well. But look, you can guarantee some of these guys will all be living together and they'll know each other. Uh, I played in a Sigerson match where two brothers marked each other, uh, Shamie and Henry Downey. Uh, you know, these games don't get any more uh, close or more contested than Sigerson, you know, it's not, they're unbelievable. And Henry went over before the game and gave Seamus a dunk? Uh, apparently he did, yeah. Yeah, uh, it was a game, actually it was here, where we were, uh, Queens were playing some Aries, and uh, Henry was the older brother, and Shamie was a, f a fresher, freshers aren't allowed to play now, of course, first years. Uh, but uh, I think there was a wee bit of argy-bargy before the match, and two fantastic players who obviously went on to win All-Irelands with Derry uh, in 93. Absolutely. And looking at those guys over there from Ulster University as well, and looking at the crowd, which is going to fill up, there's 350 seats there. That will fill up. We're a good way away from the start of the game, and it's already filling up. There's a lot of people in the area to the right behind the glass as well. They are all coming in, and they'll filter around this wonderful stadium here at the Dub Arena and the pitch looks fantastic too. Team news we'll get to two. We'll do the two teams in a minute. The big question is whether Dara Canavan will start for Ulster University. They've named him at number 23 but what a setting here. We were out on the pitch. I was here last night for the McGurk Cup as well and it's fabulous. It's really firm, really good. You nearly think it was 3G or whatever, 4G you call it from a distance now. It's smashing now. Maybe not the length that some pitches would have, but it's pretty near it. And it's a great setting for a game. And the atmosphere should be terrific. If you think of other colleges, stadiums around Ireland, you're looking at Carlo and those sort of places, IT Carlo, or now it's SE2U Carlo, or maybe down at Cork, the old CIT stadium as well. But this is terrific, Mark, isn't it? Look, I, I just wish they had this stadium back when I was playing for Queens. Um, it's, it's, a phenomenal, it's a phenomenal setting to play any football game or hurling game. Uh, never mind a Sigerson match. Um, you know, uh, you were right, we were on the pitch. It reminds me of the Crow Park pitch. It's really, really hard underfoot, but there is a wee bit of water sitting on top of it in patches. Not, not lying as such, but, it, you know, it's going to be really boot selection. You would think that they'll have to go for the, the longer studs tonight. Um, the wind seems to be dropping a wee bit. It was blowing straight down the field there, Jerome, but now it seems to be going more across the field. So, um, look, it's going to be a really interesting game. I really can't, can't wait for this. Do you think Derek Hanavan will start? I do, yeah. I think um, the teams that we've been given, Jerome, I think there'll be two or three changes, you know. Um. Well, let's have a look at them then. Let's have a look at the teams and we'll go through what we've been given. And we will stress, Mark, that we've been given a 15 and then there's a lot of subs as well so it might change but this is a 15 we've been given so looking at queens first of all the manager of course connor deegan your old mate from the 91 and 94 all ireland wins but looking at that queens team there brian cassidy and goals he's one of five dairy men in that 15 and you have five tyrone men there as well and the captain is tiernan bogue at midfield from tempo in fermanagh and you have a whole mixture there. I mean, Jermot Baker from Steelstown and Derry is an interesting one because there's also a Steelstown man at full forward for Ulster University. That's Ben McCarran. So they'll be very close to each other and they're from the same club. And you have a lot of clashes. You have Carrick Moore, Dungan and Maherfeld and Burren, of course, all the players on both. But looking at that team, how do you think they will pan out there? Or do you think they will line out like that? Of course, I know 
you know, numbers don't necessarily mean an awful lot now. But what do you think looking at that team? Well, you know, it's, it's hard to know. I, you know, I would know that obviously the down players better. I would suspect that Fenton Canavan will start. He has played the last couple of years for them. Uh, he's a medical student, really good footballer, can play midfield, half back, half forward. Um, I do know that Peter Fagan again was injured at the weekend. He would have probably started for them. And I was talk, talking to Conor Deegan there before the match, and they do have a few injury concerns. So I suspect there'll be two or three changes, Jerome. I, you know, we, we don't have the final lineups, but. Um, I, do, I do know from talking to the managers that uh, it will be by numbers, so we should have the right teams anyway, you know. Well, we'll find out when the ball is thrown in, but we do expect Derek Canavan, 23, to be there. And let, let's look now at the Ulster University team, and there it is. So Connor Cush is the captain up in left corner, corner forward, uh, or rather vice captain. The captain is Ryan McGill from Burren, who... Again, you know a lot of the down lads. There's no down lads in the Queen's starting 15, but there are three there, and there's some smashing players, Mark. No, there definitely is. Ryan McGill's a fantastic uh, young player for Bourne. Uh, nephew of the Great Me Hall, he won an All-Star in 94 with Down. Uh, and, of course, Connor Cush, uh, Adrian Cush's uh, son, who, was again, was a fantastic footballer. Yeah, we were, we were talking to him there about were, 10 yeah. minutes ago. I couldn't help but go over to see him, and he's a bit grey-haired now, but uh, <laughs> having a bit of crack. He was with Fergal Logan. It was a who's who over there, and they were joking. Fergal was saying that uh, his young lad isn't left-footed. Of course, Adrian was famous for the left foot. He's right-footed. Yeah, well, all the best footballers were left-footed, <laughs> uh, Jerome. You see, uh, I'm sure you knew that anyway. Uh, look, they have, a, they have other good, uh, interesting thing that Fergal said is that Ryan Jones is a grandson of the great Iggy Jones. And my father would always talk about Iggy Jones as being one of the all-time greats before Peter Canavan, uh, before Eugene steady, McKenna, steady. and before, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and before um, uh, the great, uh, what do you call it? Frank McGuigan. Frank McGuigan, yeah. You know, but Iggy Jones was up there in that company. Bless yourself so, now. Uh, not at all, not at all. <laughs> we were, you know... Uh, Great footballer that he was, you know, I'll say nothing. Um, but no, look, I, I do know some of the other ones here. I know Dominic McEnhill there from Rossa. He's a really good player. Uh, he's the same age as my young lad, so I've seen him coming up through the ranks. Good hurler as well. Um, and then, of course, uh, Andrew Gilmore, who's come into the down squad the last couple of years, a, a fantastic wee player. But again, looking at the bench there, you know, you'd think that Dara Callaghan would come in. There's a few boys on the bench with uh, with county experience. Uh, again, Tom Close from Clondoff and a couple of the the, the Devlins there from Dungannon and, and Arbo there. I think uh, one of them is involved with the Tyrone squad as well. So look, who knows what team will start? There's two Connell Devlins, just to confuse us yep. even more. But they're actually from different clubs. They it's are. not a spelling mistake or a mistake. And also, I mean, you mentioned county men. Ryan Conver, he plays for Portland on, and Antrim, and he's a smashing player as well. And he's only number 17. So yeah. they have so much talent. And this is the story here. That Ulster University squad there unbelievable talent but it's the same all the time and it's the age old thing and up here in this part of the world if people don't know that they always have big names they always have the they players have. but they haven't won a Sigerson since 2008 when Peter Donnelly from Coliton was a captain Patty Cunningham played Carl Lacey played it doesn't always work that yet that's the top players the top names as such yeah I think you know back years ago in the 80s and 90s you, you really had three or four months to prepare for Sigerson and, and the only team you trained with was your Sigerson team. Nowadays, the guys, there's so much, so much more club competition. The club championships go on to October, and then you're into the Ulster competitions. Uh, but it's not only at senior level now, it's intermediate and junior, and it's hurling as well. And a lot of the guys out there, I know the likes of Conor McCricket, they want, he, he played in the Ulster, he played in the Leitrim team that won the Ulster intermediate uh, hurling title. So guys are finding it difficult to get training with the universities. Never mind the fact that the counties are back, probably training. I don't know how long they're training now, but you know, it's actually getting a hold of the players. It's, it's very, very difficult on the managers. Well, that's why early in January, it's great to see a game like this, because there's no holding back. There's nope. nobody looking for excuses. There's nobody being pulled out. These two teams really want to go to each other. As soon as the draw was made last month, there was a new in the room and word got round them. It's all about local pride. These boys are giving everything tonight. There's no worrying about the next day or thinking about the next day. The uh, referees are out in the middle there, by the way. I'll give them a mention now. Sean Herson is reffing it. And on the line, he's got Colin McDonald and Conal Roberts are two Belfast referees, two Antrim referees, and we're expecting a full house here in the Electric Ireland Sigerson Cup. It is free on YouTube. Don't be fooled by any of the scammers that are out there. There's a lot of them trying to get you. It's free thanks to the Higher Education Committee. 
and they are making this game available tonight and rightly so as well but it's free on YouTube share it as you wish there and also leave a comment as you wish we'll be happy to take a comment from you as the game goes on as well and towards the end we will take your nominations for player of the match these two have actually not met in the Sigerson would you believe for 12 years 2010 was the last time Connor Deegan is the manager of Queen's and for Ulster University it's Barry Dillon and he's got Paul Rice in there and Benny Hurl, a couple of Tyrone men in there with him. Also tonight there's a few other Sigerson games, there's Carlo against St Mary's, that could be a cracker as well down there in Carlo. And you have ATU Donegal against DCU up in Donegal and Convoy and MTU Corker playing UCD, the, those are the other three games tonight. And by the way the Donegal and DCU game well, one of those teams will match, will both, they'll both match up with this fixture, Mark, and so the winners from this will play the losers from the other one. That's the way it goes. But as I said, you know, those Queens lads out there, home territory, they want to beat their local rivals to get the bragging rights, and their captain's going over to the middle now to take the toss as well with Sean Hurston. There's no way they're even thinking about the next day. They'd be happy in a way, they won't admit it, just to beat this opposition tonight. Nobody will be thinking about the back door, Jerome. Absolutely nobody will be thinking about the back door. There's just too much pride at this. Um, I can't emphasise enough how close these teams are. Like They are your mates. You know, I was I was travelling back from Dublin the other day and I stopped into one of the Apple Greens and sitting there was Ender Gormley, who I had many a battle with at, at Sigerson and Ryan Cup for, uh, playing for Jordanstown. And he would have won a couple around 86, he, he 87 did, with DJ did. Kane and Eamon That's Coleman right, managing yeah. and all that. Yeah, well, didn't think you were that old, Mark. Oh, yes, yes, I certainly am. Like, DJ and Enda are best, are best buddies. You know, they managed Dara Cross together last year. Uh, there's so many, like, you know, there were just so many crossovers in those teams. Exactly, the so 90s. those two lads are still the best yeah. of mates after being best of mates back in the mid-80s. So these lads, they talk about, is it also university, they talk about friends for life, and they're right. And looking at the Sigerson wins, by the way, down the years, I mean, Queen's have won it eight times. Last time in 2007, and there's the anthem now, so I'll pause. Well, I can tell you the numbers are impressive. There's already 1,500 devices tuned in to this YouTube coverage supplied by Higher Education GAA. That is huge. I've Mark McCartan with me, and I have to tell you, Mark, that's the biggest I have ever seen, I think, at this level. Huge, and it'll only build as the game goes on. Now, we're going to look out and see if there are any late changes. That is the Queen's team Queen's in team. traditional green, and if you see any switches, let me know. Go on ahead. No, I just saying there, the, the, of the Queen's team that I see so far, they're all uh, numbered 1 to 15, which is great for us, obviously. Uh, for anybody who hasn't seen a Sigerson game before, I just like to stress the, the absolute quality of the standard in this. You know, these teams are certainly on a par with some of the, the probably the Division 4 county teams. Um, obviously, Jordanstown here, like they're a who's who. They're, they're going to have county players on the bench here today, regular for county teams. The standard is really, really good. And at this time of the year, it's probably the best football you'll see. I'm just looking around to see who's going where. And Ulster University are playing from left to right as we watch it. I'm seeing 14, 15, 11, 10. I don't see Derek Hannibal out there. No, I don't see him either. Um, so we're lining out as we give the teams earlier on and we're about to start so they're keeping him in reserve maybe he's got an injury or something but we would expect him to play a part tonight but they have a big big panel Sean Hurston the referee and big crowd in here at the Dub Arena for this game the Electric Ireland Sigerson Cup first round game local rivals and already there's a foul right at the start as Tiernan Bogue the Queen's captain wrestles 
his man to the ground, but it's going to be a free for Oren Murdoch from Burren, and he is going to just leave that and was moved on a little bit there. That must have been a bit of back chat, and that would not be wise tonight, especially if the referee has done that in the first 10 seconds or so. And look who they're bringing up. They're bringing the goalkeeper up, the number 11, oh, and the... the it's Dominic Mike and Hill and the referee saying, well, if you're going to mess around, we'll just get on with the game. And um, he didn't give the referee time <laughs> to get up. But maybe if they'd have decided earlier, maybe he'd have been OK. But the fact, I suppose, they just looked around a bit. He wants this game to move, and so do we. So it's four or five Ulster University men around him, and they get the ball off Tiernan Bog, and they're going to get another chance. Will he risk bringing the goalkeeper up now, or will he try and get on with it? The goalkeeper's not too far away. But I'd say after what happened a minute ago, they are going to go short, and they do, and that's Ben McCarran gives and gets it back. But now he's surrounded by three green shirts, and it's going to be a free out. Interesting start to the game, isn't it? Yeah, it's very intense, Jerome, isn't it? You <laughs> well, know, that's the, what ball, the ball hasn't moved 20, 20 <laughs> feet yet, and, and we've had about four fouls, mm. and we've had uh, a person blowing up a hot ball because they didn't get it away quickly enough. Well, I think the referee wants to get this game going, and I like that, don't you? Absolutely. No, I think that's a, uh, that's a really uh, g good thing. But as I say, it's the intensity, what we talked about beforehand. Both teams want to win this, Jerome. Absolutely. Now, Paddy Finnegan from just down the road here, very close to here in South Belfast. He's St Bridget's Belfast, and there's an effort. It's going to go to the right, though, from Luke Donnelly, and it's going to go out, and he misjudged that one quite badly there, Luke number 15. He was maybe trying to bring it in but you were saying there's a bit of a wind and it's coming up in that direction and would have blown yeah, it over the wind seems to be uh, coming basically over our shoulders as we're looking at it uh, straight across the field towards uh, the left hand corner um, no, definitely caught the wind and um, probably not a maybe just outside the shooting zone yeah, maybe it'll be going for the near post, but I'm sure you'll have learned from that one. Now, right down below us, this is Dan Higgins for Queens with the ball, and he's got it, and he's done really well there to keep possession. He's given it to Callum O'Hare from Kalevi, and it's Queens now with a bit of possession, and they're certainly not phased at all. They are going to go at Ulster University here, and this is Higgins again from Mahara Felt, and there are Mahara Felt men on both sides teams tonight lots of stars from yesteryear over before the game we were talking to Paul Brewster Aidan O'Rourke Fergal Logan Adrian Cush all sorts of boys up here to see this game tonight they want to sample the atmosphere and I have to say it's a bit quiet so far but there's a wee hit there and it will liven up I'd say as we go on but at the moment it's quite quiet here in South Belfast we wonder will it be like that at the end of the game depends what these lads put on for us tonight Bogue the captain from Tempo, Maguire's in Fermanagh. Good work from him. And they're just trying to engineer a little bit of room. And Callum O'Hare involved as well. And man goes to ground. And that is a free in. And it was the number seven, Liam Downey from Derry, who was fouled. Patient play. Very patient. They held on to the ball well. You know, uh, Jordanstown are setting up there. They, they seem to have a sweeper in front of the full back line. And then they're picking up their men as they come into the 45. Uh, and letting sort of Queens have the ball outside the 45 metre line. But uh, Queens did well, worked it, and then got their free. We're up to 2,000 devices now switched into this game. I told you it would grow. I didn't think it would be that much, but that's well over 2,000 people because that's just devices. So huge crowd, huge interest in this game tonight. That's going to drop short, but it still could be dangerous, but it's well watched. Square ball. And it's going to be a free out, yeah. yeah it's a, a square ball there. So, uh, no, it's, uh, it's an interesting start, Jerome. Definitely is. Queen's taking the game to them. Absolutely. But patient play, and it's, as you know, it's just the team sit in. But now they try to move it on the counter as quickly as he can. There's a tough challenge going Sorry. over. I wonder will the referee want to have a word with that one? It looked like he took him out there. Let's have a look at the replay here, Mark. It yeah. comes up here along the far side there. And it is Carl Gannaher leaving it off. And the big hit coming in from yeah. Tiernan Bogue, the captain. And is he making a statement there at the start of the game? Oh, well, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It used to be back in the 60s and 70s and even the early 80s that you, there was an unwritten rule you did not get sent off in Sigerson. Now, that's certainly changed uh, in the mid-80s uh, with, with the hat too because it was just getting too rough. But that was a serious hit there. It's and he's the just ball. laying down a marker, shall we say. But also University now have the ball. They have the free. And this is Oren Murdoch. And he's getting support from Aidan Donaghy, the other midfielder from Loch McCrory in Tyrone. And he bursts in. But as usual, what you have to do is release the ball. Don't run in and don't lose the ball. But that's happened a lot in the game so far, Mark, isn't it's, it? It's just, just carried the, the ball in. It's the intensity that both teams are bringing to this. You have to move the ball so quickly. And that's the thing about Sigerson. You know, when I was playing Sigerson, it was as quick as county football. It wasn't as skillful, but it was as quick. Uh, because these guys are all... They're all 21, 22, 23. They're flying fit. 
and you can just see it. They're just flying into tackles, and they're getting their when when they're going to put pressure on the ball, it's working. Yeah, you see the player there, one of the, the forward, and he got the ball and he realised, oh, oh, I'm in trouble here, they're going to clamp me here, and he tried to turn and release it, but wasn't able to. So the game is being played at a serious pace, but we don't actually have a score yet in the game. And we're going five and a half minutes, but Queen's now, will they get the first score? Liam Downey involved, and Bogue again, he's been involved a lot, the captain, and he slips it to Higgins. And Higgins has seen a good bit of ball as well. And now you see Ulster University just drifting back here. I can see them just to the left of the shot there and off camera as well. And Queen's going down the right-hand side now with Callum O'Hare. And he gets it back to, out to Oren Mallon, number 14. But he's out around the middle there from Dungannon Clarks. And we saw Audie Hamilton in there as well earlier on before the game. Lots of interest in this game. Lorcan McWilliams, another dairy man from Swatra. Gets it out to Luke Donnelly from Eglish. And now Higgins with the effort. Will this be the first score of the game? He has. He's got the range. And they worked it really well there. And Queen's are in front. Have another look at it there, Mark. Yeah, no, look. Queen's pressed up. And then the man hanging off 30 yards out. I suppose kicking with whatever wind there is. Just in the scoring zone. Knocked it over the bar. Exactly what Queen's need really here. Because Jordanstown are big favourites here, Jerome. Queen's have to put it up to them in the first half. I'm only surprised that I didn't hear a really big roar for that, but it's, it seems like the crowd are taking a while to get into it. But there is a big crowd in here in the Dub Arena, and it is built for atmosphere. It's a nice tight venue here, but a good start for Queens. That's the important thing for Conor Deegan, 1991 and 1994 down All Ireland winner. He came in here a couple of years ago. Queens hadn't won a game at the Sigerson for about five years or something. He got a win, and he's there now. And what a win this would be if they were able to beat the Ulster University tonight. That would really be one that you would put down on your CV. But we're a long, long way away from that. Ulster University with possession now. And it's Queen's who are going to sit in. And that means the ball is going to come back out to Dominic McInhill from Rossa here in Belfast. Who slips it to Rory Slane from Carrick Moore in Tyrone. And he tries to find a little way through and they're doing exactly what Queen's did at the other side Andrew Gilmore from John's St John's Drummer Road and County down near Castlewell and there's room over the far side here now if Donaghy can spread it and if they can find a little pocket James Donaghy from Carrickmore as well trying to find that pocket but Queen's working hard just to mark that space and not let them through and they end up back with Dominic McInhill they're now having to be patient and Queen's coming out and they will try to put pressure on them it's not the same game that Mark and the boys played back in the <laughs> 80s and 90s, definitely not, but it is intriguing. Ryan Jones, grandson of Iggy Jones, goes through and gets the first score of the game for his team. I don't know if there was much fisting of the ball back in Iggy's day, but certainly that was a great finish and a great run. Yeah, it was a great run down the right-hand side, and it just shows you what the injection of pace can do. And you can see him there just uh, hand-passing the ball over the bar. But both teams are setting up the same way, Jerome. Both are playing with one sweeper and then picking up the players as they come across the 45. And it just needs someone like a, a half back to come through there and sort of burst through that they haven't really countered on. And there's a ball in. I thought the referee might give something there. He hasn't. There might be a goal chance here, though, because Queen's have it. There's a lot of men in front of him. The keeper's off his line, deflected wide. And that's one of those incidents that might have just decided a game. A goal will be crucial in this. And he nearly got through there, Mark. Look, look at Orrin Lynch here. Orrin Lynch does really well. He's running back and he gets a hand on it. If he hadn't have got that, I think that would have hit the back of net. A really good move from Queen's, though. Straight up the middle, fast moving ball. Again, the secret is to move the ball fast, Jerome. If you move it fast, the guys can't get a tackle on you. And that's where teams, both teams are, are getting their, uh, their joy from. The fast hands are, and then the same with Jordanstown in that last score there, down the right hand side, injecting pace. They'll be encouraged as well about the way that they were able to counter there and nearly get a goal. Maybe should have taken a point, but either way, they have a 45 now and Lorcan McWilliams has taken it. That's going to drop short, but it's going to drop to a Queen's man and he might still get a score out of this. He swivels and puts oh. it over beautifully. That's Oren Mallon from Dungannon Clarks and he's got a great score for the home team. And they lead again. They lead by 2-1 to one and a very confident start by the home team. Absolutely, that was a great score. He took that really well, knew exactly what he was going to do, he created a bit of space for himself, got himself on his left foot, knocked it over the bar. But Ulster University will not be panicking at all. Just the 2-1 down and 
They have lots of ability here. And of course, of Dara Canavan and a few other quality players on the bench as well. Early days. Now, there's a smashing effort, is it? No, it goes well to the left, actually. It was a stylish effort, <laughs> uh, shall we say it that way, off the outside of the boot. I thought it was going to be a wonder score, but he missed by quite some way. And the same that happened at the other end. I will give him the benefit of uh, saying that it might be the wind that is quite strong going across the ground. So we'll let him off that way. Dan Higgins has got the ball again now for Queen's. He's seen a lot of it around here, but there's Jones marking him. And that's a Tyrone Derry match up there. And they've both made a good start to this game because Jones got the only point so far for Ulster University. But Queen's now with the ball. And this is Larkin McBride for Queen's. Another Carrick Moore man. Lots of Tyrone men out there. Five on each of the starting 15s. Higgins always available. Where is he going to go with that little fist pass over the top to pop it over a few defenders? And there's holding surely there by Oren Murdoch. But the referee says no. And the intense clamp goes in again and they are forced to go back and Bogue is going to be patient and might just slip it to Liam Downey no he changes the direction and goes to the other side there's lots of movement I can see off camera and it's spotted by Callum O'Hare and he puts it in there but look who's back there it's number 11 Dominic McInhill who went and spotted that and won the ball and turned it over and he's got us free but there's an injury at least one injury there and they're going to get a bit of treatment there but just looking at that again it's good great, defending great bit of a defend and a really hard hit there now I'm not sure whether it was uh, legal or not. It may have been. It's very hard to tell on, on the monitor there. But uh, he looks like he's hurt. Let's hope that they, he's not hurt. Looks like it's his shoulder. Uh, and let's hope that young Magan Hill is okay. Like it is. Ooh, big hit. Big hit indeed, yeah. But that, you know, th that's what you expect in Sigerson. Uh, uh, Jerome, we, we talked about it before the match, the intensity. Um, but a couple of times there, Queens were attacking. And they were trying to give, you know, the wonder ball. And it was going into a man surrounded by two or three players, and it's difficult. It had to come back out. They need to be patient. Both teams need to be patient. They need to move the ball into space and move it quickly, rather than trying to put it into somebody who's surrounded by two or three players. Interesting that there's been a couple of big challenges. One from Bogue about five minutes ago, but the referee haven't seen him put a yellow card out so far. He's just let that go, and obviously he thought that was a, a legal enough challenge he's given a free against him but no need for a card at least i didn't see one anyway no i didn't see anything um is, is he all right let's just, let's just hope he's all right yeah well he's got the arms up that looks that's a good sign should be all right we'll be able to get back into it so yeah five dairy men on the queen's team five tyrone no down surprisingly enough and for ulster university they've two dairy three down five tyrone one monaghan two from anna mm. and one from Antrim as well. That's the mix, and that's what you get at this level. As you said at the start, Mark, they all know each other very, very well. Yeah, and a lot of these guys would have played schools football against each other as well. You know, playing for the likes of Mahara and uh, Duncanan and all those other great football schools. You know, so well, we haven't seen too many fireworks so far, but games don't tend to have fireworks in the first half much these days anyway. But it is intriguing, and it is intense. And this is Caelan McColgan from Donegal. Actually, I didn't mention the Donegal man there. I should have done, but that's him. He's from Donegal, the right corner back. And this is Aidan Donaghy spreading the play. And Queen's just sitting in now, sort of along the 45. And there's a line there. And then there's men coming out to meet to make sure they don't get too close. They've only scored once so far. And it's been a fisted effort. That one from distance is going to go to the left. Well to the left and wide. I'm going to say again that the wind might have been a factor there but they're just not getting close at all us university they're, they're, they're shooting from outside the scoring zone you know the wind's there they know the wind's there and the last two shots have, have come from both wide positions you know you look back at that dublin team a few years ago they very rarely shot from outside the d is it a factor that they don't play here it's not their ground and sometimes it can be a little bit deceptive at that end and you know the ground's a little bit shorter than you think but they just haven't got their range yet P possibly, or maybe down at pitch level, there just isn't the same wind that there is. You know, once the ball gets into the air, then maybe the wind takes it. But well, there's a big ball into the full forward area for Queens, and it's broken nicely, and it's taken well by Lorcan McWilliams feeds it back out, and they're having a lot of joy in there, which surprises me a little bit. Rory Donnelly now, and there's an effort from distance from him. It's going to go to the left and wide, I think, or is it just going to curl in? No, it's going to go to the left and wide, and 
Somebody's asking me on the Facebook live chat there, who are the down men? Well, I have a down man with me here, Mark McCartan, but you want to know the players. It's Oren Murdoch, number nine, is from Burren. Ryan McGill, the captain for Ulster University, also Burren, is at number six for them. And there are three. The other one is Andrew Gilmore, number 13 from St. John's Drummer Road. Queens have turned it over. And this is Paddy Finnegan from St. Bridget's in Antrim. Lives round the corner from here. Slips it to Luke Donnelly. And there's a chance here, but Higgins is sent to the ground and the referee says that's fair enough. Now that could be a foul, but the referee again says it's fine. Jermyn Baker from Steel Star, no it wasn't, it was Rui Slane with the tackle there, it was the other number four. This is Rory Donnelly for Queen, slipping it inside to Lorcan McWilliams and he's forced to come back out. A couple of challenges there that might have ended up in a free, but the referee, I think, right to let them go. Well, he's um, being consistent. Yeah. Uh, Jerome, it's, it's the same for both teams. Yeah, so just because there's a hand goes in there, he's not just going for it. And you like to see that as well. He's not just reacting. And maybe that's good, as you say. Now, they're working this ball nicely out to Rory Donnelly. He's got a bit of room here. He's going to go inside the 45. Can he find a pocket of space? No, it's closed down. And that's good defending by Ryan McGill there, the captain who just waited for him. Didn't panic. And they've just sort of closed the door at every opportunity so far. And it's been the same at the other end. That's why we have only three scores in the first quarter of this game. And that... Definitely was not the way the game was played back in the day when a lot of the lads are here tonight from the past winners in the Sigerson played. Very, very different game this year. This These days it's like cat and mouse and that's a foul on Keelan McColgan and free given. And referee is going to take him for that. He's not going to book Tiernan Bogue, but Bogue's been involved a lot, shall we say. No, he certainly had a lot of ball, but look, I can understand why he took him. You could clearly see that he was holding his jersey. Uh, and of course the player went to the ground so the result when a player goes to the ground there's always a chance of a black card you know absolutely and he was involved in a big hit earlier on as well yeah he was so i guess as captain he's trying to lay down that marker that i was talking about and he's done that but he needs to be careful too now this is a free and is this inside the scoring zone well frees are normally well no i don't think it is but that wind oh yeah he's a bit far yeah. out actually i thought he was a bit closer he's putting it on the ground though you don't see that often uh, no, but if, if you can head it off the ground, I, particularly when there's wind, you know, you're taking out one of the variables because the ball's sitting still. The only thing moving is your leg. Uh, and if you can do it, it's, I think it's a better way of kicking the ball. It's good connection on it, actually, Great. but it's uh, yeah. to the left. Is it? No, it's gone over, is it? Yeah, it's gone over. Oh, no, no square, square, ball. Ball. square ball. Square ball. Yeah, you got, but I think the wind did hold it up. Definitely did, Jerome. Uh, but it was good refereeing. Uh, the fact that when it is a free kick, it's the old square ball rule. You must wait until the ball uh, goes into the square before you can go in. Brian Cassidy, the goalkeeper for Queens, coming out of his goals just to help out the defence and make himself available. Higgins always available and gets it. Takes it from Matthew Murnahan, the number six, who's from Kitty Glaher in Tyrone. And this is him now on the ball again, right down below. It gives it to Higgins and he's on a run. He's got two men after him and loses it. It's turned over and that's McGill who's digging in there, he's lost it though, and they're all scrapping for it in there, the referee's keeping a close eye to it, and Queen's have got it, but he took it off the ground, and referee says that's a free out. I think young Paddy was a bit unfortunate there, it looked like he picked it up for me. Well, but I saw the referee go down looking, yeah. to be fair, he was down <laughs> looking, he was. and he's a lot closer than us, and I'm, I'm going to say, I'll give, a, I'll give that one to him. But what we are seeing, Jerome, is we are seeing if you delay on the ball at all, you're getting closed down. Yes, absolutely, you need to release it. Now, this is Ben McCarran from Steelstown in Derry. And this is Connor Cush, the vice captain from Donnock Moor in Tyrone. This is McCarran again. And Queen's doing really well to keep them away from that scoring zone that Mark McCartan's talking about. And this is Dominic McInhill now around the middle. But look at the green shirts. They're so organised and working so hard and just forcing them to go into the corners where it's really hard to get a score from. It needs to be a wonder score from there. And that is a wonder score. They've got it. And that's two all after, what, 18, nearly 19 minutes. Very low scoring. That's the way it is these days. And it needs a really good shooter. And that was a really good shooter. Yeah, look, that was an excellent score. He was on his left foot. He had the wind and he put it up. He knew where he was going. He was full of confidence. That was a great score. And in and, and fairness, uh, Jordan's Centre probably deserved that because they have come back into the game a bit. They're, they're, they're precising the stats, I would say, have went up in the last five minutes. Yeah, that's true. Queen's haven't made as much headway, but now they have the ball and Oren Mallon has it. Number 14, challenging number 14. Right in the middle of the field and leaves it off the run off the shoulders from the number three. Larkin McBride from Carrick Moore puts it high in there and puts it wide. Uh, again, shooting from too far out, Jerome. Was he shooting or passing? I'm not sure, you know, but it, I think he was. it was a waste. There was nobody inside, so I, I, I think he was shooting. 
you know, you have to be a bit smarter than that at this level. You have to be making sure that you get the ball over the bar. It's winter football. The ball doesn't travel as far. It's windy. You've got to be sure. Oh, great pace. 20 minutes gone. Ulster University have not been in the lead in this game yet, but Andrew Gilmore is trying to do something about that, and he might get through here. It's a free in. He's got us free for his hard work, and you would imagine from there that that will be Ulster University going ahead for the first time in the game, and the down man did well. He did very well there. Um, he's been playing for down in the Mechanic Cup there, been playing exceptionally well. Uh, he had a great year for his club, St John's as well. Uh, seen a few games in the Championship and the Down Championship. Fantastic young footballer. Um, if he keeps if he keeps going the way he is, he's going to be he's going to be exceptional. Blasted over the bar by Connor Cush, and that puts Ulster University into the lead for the first time in the game in the twenty first minute, three to two. Now the goalkeeper is Brian Cassidy for Queens. Goes long this time, puts it very high up around the middle. Bow goes up for it, but it's the other number eight. It's Aidan Donaghy from Loch McCrory who wins it. McGill gets Ulster University on the attack and gives it into McCarran who got that great score a minute ago. They've got the last two scores in the game, Ulster University. Great tackle there from uh, uh, young uh, Sean McCarthy from Clan and He got the hand in. I thought Gilmore had it and he managed to get the hand in. Back to the goalkeeper from Mahara Felt, or from Bally McGuigan rather, down the road. This is Jeremy Baker, another Derry man, but from Derry City, from the Steelstown Club. Rory Donnelly now gives it to back to Baker. He's got another Derry man here, Higgins, but he can't get it to him, but he is fouled, so free in, but outside I would say the score and distance from there. By the way, there are three other games tonight in the Electric Ireland Sigerson Cup. One has been delayed, that's the one up in Donegal, DCU travelling all the way up there, and it's been delayed from 7 to 7.00. 30. If I get any scores from the games or updates, I'll give them to you. There's an update, actually. I've just spotted MTU Cork, three points. UCD, 1-4. So UCD winning there. Now, is he going to defy me and put that over from there? No, it's gone well to the right from Luke Donnelly. And it's actually still in play, but neither side are really judging that too well. Apart from Ben McCarran, when he kicked with the wind at his back, but there's been quite a few balls that have gone astray and I think that one went astray as well but also University managed to hold possession and feed it back out now to Rory Slane and they just look to be getting to grips with this game and as I say that they give it away and Rory Donnelly steps in there and gets possession and gives it to Paddy Finnegan Finnegan off the shoulder is Rory Donnelly and this is good work by Queens now they could do the score just to get the back end of the game they've had two early on need another one Higgins goes with his left foot and he might just curl that in has that gone over he has got it over the bar that's a brilliant score I've only seen him use his right foot so far but that was beautifully done and that's the team's level and that's an inspirational score for the home team it just shows you the value of a turnover around the middle of the park because defences aren't set up and then again the quick hands and into the man, and it was a great shot with the left foot. Like that's, that, that's as good a score as, as you'll see with somebody. I'm, I'm assuming it's his weaker foot because he has been kicking with his right foot all night. Great score, but again, it came from the turnover. It came from that intensity that we talked about before. And uh, a couple of wee challenges went in before that as well, Jerome. I'm glad I'm not playing, I'll tell you. Here, I'll take a weaker foot like that if you put it <laughs> over like that. That was a great score. Um, he'd been keeping that a secret, but he is wearing 10, but he's playing on the left. Nice score, but used the win beautifully. Absolutely. Whereas before that, there was one that went way, way over to that side. So he got the message. He got the email. Now, that's good work by Aidan Donaghy. Feeds it back out, and McCarran is always there. Dominic McInhill is always there, and he's available now for Murdoch. That's the diamond in around there for Ulster University and there's a tackle going in and he's just you see the referee saying you've given I'm given that because the hand went in there and the man went down and you've got to be disciplined yeah look I, I, I don't think it was just that it was a hand it looked like a close fist to me yeah okay uh, and I think there was a couple of close fist tackles going in there but they've been the refs been letting those go all night uh, and again it's Gilmore uh, you know if Gilmore gets into this game Queens are going to have to shut him down he's an exceptional at winning his own ball for a small man He's really, really good. Yeah, he's causing them a lot of trouble in there. And he did get a bang, but as you say, there was three or four men around him, and he can't be rash. He can't do that. No. Especially, especially on a night like tonight, Jerome, where you know, free kicks could end up winning this game because of the wind. Um, 
and again he set the ball on the ground he had a good strike this guy the last time a lot closer further out but he has measured it nicely he's got his range and that's nicely put over from Cush yeah, and Cush Cush University course, yeah. are well yeah and uh, well Fergal was slagging his dad saying he's right footed <laughs> and Con Adrian didn't have a right foot but we need a left foot as good as his he didn't need a right really uh, Adrian was that good a footballer you nearly thought he was from down Jerome <laughs> <laughs> it's only taken 25 minutes <laughs> of the game I'm going to let that slide but really yeah, it's a yellow it's a yellow card offence might even be black card <laughs> virgin between the two there's a down man now Ryan McGill from good stock a teammate of yours Michal McGill would be his uncle his dad would be Connor. he's the captain of the team a great leader I think he's only second year as well He's a great young player. Uh, he's going to be. He's going to be a really good halfback, cornerback for Darren in the years to come. No, it's Connor Cush. I'm thinking of Connor Cush. Year. Oh, he's right. only second year. But anyway, a lot of good players out there. Very Adon so. Donahue comes back inside. Ryan Jones now. He's got one point to his name already. He got the first now. You can see Queens are watching now because Ben McCarron is on the ball now. He put one over from yeah. over there earlier on. So they're going. Hold on, we might need to reassess this scoring zone. Dominic McInhill plays it cross field. 26 minutes gone. Four points plays three. It's as close as we expected that it would be. Who's got the ball? It's James Donaghy on the run, trying to find his way through there, trying to find a pocket of space and played in there. And that's played in nicely to that man you were talking about, Gilmore. They keep fouling him. He keeps going and freezing. He's won another one. There's the danger. He is the ball inside that's winning. Yeah, and Or Orrin Murdoch would know him well from playing with that then under 20 team that won the Ulster a couple of years ago. Uh, knew that if he put the ball into Kilmore that he would win it. But I'm just getting a feeling that Jordanstown are getting the grips of this game, Jerome. They just seem to be up on the level the last couple of minutes, would you agree? That's what I was trying to say, and then they give the ball away a couple of minutes ago <laughs> and uh, just knocked that theory on the head. But no, I'm going to agree with you. And, um, you know, this guy said, what, four or five frees that yeah. he didn't have in the first 10 minutes? They're fouling far too much. And by the way, I think I saw a sub in there, or maybe he was on from the start and we didn't spot him, but I think I saw a number 20 for Queens in there, okay. which would interestingly be a man who plays with Kilmacud Crooks. That's Porrid Podrig Purcell. 20 in there. I'm not sure if he's come in or, or we just missed that or he was in at the start, but I think I saw a 20 closing in on him there. You know the way they hunt in packs and there's a whole lot of... Queen's men around them there, but they have fouled too much in the last five or six minutes. And by the way, we're up to 3,000 devices watching this game now. That's terrific. Thanks for tuning in. We hope you're enjoying it. Uh, I think there will be real fireworks in the second half, so stick with us. And feel free to leave a message there on the live chat on YouTube. Mark? Yeah, yeah uh, Purcell has come on there. Uh, uh, he's playing inside. Um, uh, Connor was Connor Deegan was saying he's, he's a really, really pacey player. Uh, not involved with Kilmacott at the moment because he's studying up here so he's been going full time with Queens which is great for Connor I think uh, but Connor rates him very highly says he's, he's, he's a good player well I suppose if he was involved he wouldn't be playing here tonight because they've got the All-Ireland like Connor Glass yeah. has as well but yeah I've just noticed you're right he's playing way up in the full forward area but it, as the game is these days he was back tackling a minute ago at the other end yeah that's just the way football is now you just have to chase your man you, you know while you may be inside most of the time and that's Matthew Murnan injured, by the way, in there. But is he okay? Well, Center sorry. half back. Actually, he's gone off. He has gone off. Okay. Yeah, maybe he'll come back on. I'm not sure what that is, but that would be a blow for Queens. Their center half back from Kelly Clahar St. Mary's and Tyrone is being walked off the field there. And it doesn't look good, Jerome. It looks like he's holding his shoulder or something there, is it? Yeah. Yeah, he's got the water, water bottle. Yeah, there's a water bottle on one side, but it might yeah. be the other one. I'm not quite sure, and I don't see anybody coming on. No, actually, look, there is a man there yeah, who's whipping off the bib, so they are going to replace him. Though that is going to be a change, and Queens are going to make that change before we restart. Now, who are they going to bring on? Um, he's running on there now. We'll see if we can get his number 21. Is that I think it is yeah, for it Queens? Like 21. Uh, Adrian McA McAvoy from Burn. Arden. Arden. Arden McAvoy oh, sorry, from yeah. St. Mary's in Burren. A lot of Burren men and both squads tonight. This is Cush. Has he got it? Oh, no. was he had a long wait there, hadn't he? Maybe put him off a bit. Um, I probably did all right. I know when I was hitting freeze, you like to set it down and, and you had your re routine. And when you have to wait because somebody's injury, you're nearly better not setting the ball up until you actually have to go and hit it. Um, quite surprised because he has been hitting them so well. Yeah. Remains four to three, but again, that wind is stronger than we feel up here. It is behind us, but we've a, we're in a building here. But it does seem to be quite strong going by a 
shots like that so he tried to judge it but didn't quite there's Higgins over on the right hand side now he's been everywhere around the half forward area for his team and that's Callum O'Hare for Queen saying move it move it over to the other side as quickly as you possibly can now, there's loads of room here for Rory Donnelly because Ulster University have retreated yeah, well, it was, we did say that they're really on, when, they, when they get up, set up defensively, they're only picking the Queen's men up really when they come inside the 45. Yeah, and they've men along that line there, and you've boys in there like Aidan Donaghy and Ryan McGill that you don't really want to be running in, but they're waiting for them. Absolutely. You certainly wouldn't want to be having to take the ball past them. And we've seen that time and time again uh, where the ball has been stripped and people have tried to run through them. And that's why it's low scoring. Yeah. It's four points to three, only seven points in the game so far. And nobody really has had a sniff of goal. Ulster University in added time here at the home of Queens against Queens, trying to launch an attack in added time. But I think we'll have three or four minutes. It's not like it'll be the last attack, but it's Jones again. Pumps it high, but that's going to be a tricky one for the forward. But Andrew... Gilmore does really well to get in behind, judged it well, and he's got lots of green jerseys around him. Goes to ground again, but this time he's not fouled, and they might just get the turnover, and they do, finally. Yeah, I think that's the first time he's been he's been closed down all night. He's He has been exceptional, really. When, when Jordanstown have got the ball into him, he's won pretty much every ball. Elsewhere tonight, MTU Cork, not 5, UCD 1-6 in that game tonight. Going to give a shout out for Packy's Bar and Trillick. Apparently it's packed out and they're all watching the game down there in Trillick. Lots of interest. Five Tyrone men on both teams tonight. Although one of them went off there, Matthew Murnahan, uh, unfortunately, a minute or two ago. But loads of interest around the country in this game. It is tight. It is intriguing. It's in the dub arena. And it's Queens on the run trying to get a score. But they've been turned over. They might get hit on the break here because Aidan Donaghy has it from Lock McCrory in County Tyrone. Bursting his way through. Leaves it off. And now they're finding a little bit of room in behind because Queens haven't got all of their men back. And they'll look for that man Gilmore again, no doubt, because he's caused so much damage. Tackles going in. But a little bit more disciplined. And then the swing of the boot comes in. And it's going to... The, is it over? I think it is. It is. It's gone over the bar. I think it was McCarran again. Was it Ben McCarran? I think it was. Or, yes. Yeah, it might have been. Or was it actually Aidan Donnelly? I'm not quite sure. We'll maybe see a replay. But either way, it's a point for Ulster University right at the end of the first half. And that's maybe been the first time that they've had a little bit of room up there, Mark. Yeah, but it's the first time they've probably turned the ball over in defence and, and went at pace. And again, if you can do that and you go at pace, the space is inside because defences aren't set. It tends to be more like the old days when it's one-on-one -on -one inside. And if you consider that Queen's were, was it 2-1 up? Also Sorry, University yeah. have got four of the last five scores and that's kind of the way the game's gone? Mm -hmm. No, it, it definitely has. We said a few minutes ago that uh, Jordanstown seems to have stepped up a level. Uh, and Queen's, well, they're still going well, but against whatever wind there has, it might be more difficult in the second half for them. Kiernan Bogue leaves it off there. And who's up there? It's Jermud Baker. And he's he going to put it over the bar, the corner back. The Baker from Derry, from Steelstown, gets all the way up there and puts it over the bar. We've seen a defender at the other end get a point. And now he's got through. It was set up by Bogue from Fermanagh and finished by the Derry man. Let's just have another little look at this. He gets in behind there. And we haven't seen him on the ball too much. But he got the score away. The press came in, but they weren't able to stop him. And that's exactly what Queen's needed right at the end of the first half because it's so hard to get through there and scores are, are at a premium. Yeah, we've had two scores in the last couple of minutes there when we went a long period of time without any scores. But again, it was fast hands, good movement. And I suppose the cornerback's coming in. No one's really looking to pick him up. Uh, and he got in and he was very confident on his right foot and he, he took it like a forward it was just a lovely wee clip over the bar but he looks like he's hurt himself unfortunately let's hope he's not too bad yeah I think it was a challenge that just came in as he kicked it and he might have got a free if he hadn't got his point but he got that and that is important for Queen's in the 34th minute of this game to get a score and just keep in touch there and I just feel the game's opening up a little bit and we'll see a lot more of that in the second half. Yeah, see, Queen's have put Logan McBride in on Gilmore now. They've switched, uh, they've switched markers on him. I can understand why, because he is the man that's causing uh, the Queen's defence all the, all the pain at the moment. Yeah, and the last ball was played into him was a really bad ball. It was played really high, and yet he judged it. You know, it was almost like there was a panic in the Queen's defence, and they were too anxious to get out to him. Yeah, no, he's a very, a very good and, uh, player. And like you think in the second half, you could see players like Dara Canavan and maybe Conor McCricker coming on. Uh, he played for Down a few years ago. Uh, 
you know. Are you trying to scare them? <laughs> well, I don't know about that. So now here, um, oh, 21's gone back off again. That must have been a blood sub then. Must have been, yeah. So Murnahan is back on for Queen's and Ardon McAvoy has gone off again. So that was a blood sub. It was over the far side. We couldn't quite see that. So that's why he's come back on. So that switch has been made again. That's good news for Queen's. 35 minutes gone. We're still in the first half and it's broken and it's scooped up there by Podrick Purcell from Kilmacud Crooks for Queens and Queens trying to equalise at the end of the first half to be delighted that they can get that this is Bogue nice little drop of the shoulder there decides not to shoot from there he gives it out to Finnegan and they've had a couple of wonder scores in their last couple of points but they've had to be really good there was a left footer from Higgins and then a brilliant effort from Baker but it's had to be good to get through this rear guard from Ulster University they're very hard to penetrate look how many white shirts are across there loads and loads and fur further back from the camera shot there there's loads more one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve and the goalkeeper inside the 45 for Ulster University making it so hard for Queens but the home side has done really well Mark just to keep in touch here and that's where they need to be at the end of the first half yeah well in fairness to Queens they probably were the better side you know the first 15 minutes of the game and then there was about four or five minutes where it was even and then Jordanstown put the squeeze on so like if they were to go in you know, a point down or even level probably wouldn't be too far away from the whole 30 minutes if you look at it that way yeah I think that's fair and this is Luke Donnelly now he'll try to change that he wants to get an equaliser right at the end of the half slips it inside but there's a press coming in and the tackle from Murdoch and he just manages I think not to give away a free Bogue does go for the effort that's not going to do I don't think it's going to go or is it going to curl in it does curl in wow I thought that was wide and then the wind that we talked about curled it in he fancied it a few times he dropped the shoulder a few times and didn't go for it but he went for it that time and that's a brilliant inspirational score from the captain to leave it level at half time the score of the first half right at the end of the first half well you did say that uh, some of the scores queen scores have been inspirational and that was probably the pick of the lot there i, I would have been shouting don't shoot don't shoot great score you know it's one of those ones uh, but no a f fabulous score there with the left foot just at the end of the match but as you rightly said he did have the win coming from this side of the field going towards the far side of the field but i quite enjoyed that half jerome uh, it was certainly very intense the first 10 15 minutes were really intense and then georgetown played some lovely football and then right at the end queen's come back in and got a couple of scores so it's it's five all. Three lovely scores at the yeah, end there. If you take yeah. Higgins off the left foot mm -hmm. and then Baker with the right foot, he got in close in behind the pass. I think it was from Bogan then. Bogue putting that over. I mean, they took some lovely scores and they'll take great inspiration and hope to be going in level at half time, and they'll be happy enough with that. And there is actually somebody on the uh, YouTube, by the way, Finber Burke, and he wants to know who's the Monaghan player, the one Monaghan player. Number 12, Carl Gallagher from Emmyville. I don't think I mentioned him in the first half, but I think he's out there. But um, <laughs> look at the crowd over there. There's 350 seats. It was packed there and a lot of people inside in the pavilion there as well and around the sides and a huge audience online, Mark, watching that first half. I think everyone else enjoyed it as well, up around 3,000 devices. I mean, that's huge for a game at this level, but sure. Why not on a what, Tuesday night? Well, what else would you be doing on a Tuesday night? And obviously, uh, you know, if the bars in Trillick are showing it, I'm sure there are other bars around the country showing it, uh, particularly in and around uh, the counties in the north here where most of the players come from. You know, there'll be so many players around, uh, around the north with no players out there, and they'll want to see it. And it's, it's been provided free by the higher education, which, look, it's absolutely fantastic. And in fairness, it's been a, it's been a good standard of match. It's been really intense. There's been some fantastic scores. And do you know what? If you dwell on that ball, you're losing it. End of story, you're losing it. And that just shows you the quality out there, Jerome. I have to tell you, though, we're going to take a break here now, but my last comment in this first half would be it was good, but we have seen nothing yet. <laughs> I, I, I would agree with you. We're going to have fireworks in the second half. You know, It's going to be good. <laughs> and Canavan's on the sideline, and as you say, there's a few other lads, other lads McCricker and so on. It's going to be fun in the second half, so please rejoin us in about five minutes' time.
Welcome back to the Dub Arena in Belfast for the Electric Ireland Sigerson Cup Belfast Derby. Ulster University against Queen's. It's level at the break as you can see. The referee you also see is out for the second half and his officials but none of the teams. You see lots of subs out there but not the teams. They're not out yet. The referee is Sean Herson. Colin McDonald you see in the shot there or saw in the shot on the line as well as is Connell Roberts. We have a full house here in the arena and we have plenty of people watching online as well. And some people asking for shout outs. John McCormick says thanks for the coverage from all those in Franny's bar in Kappa White. See it's not just up here that they're watching. Um, we also had a bar in Trillic where people were watching from. And Dylan Morgan has a message. He says you should make McCrory Cup matches live as well. We'd love to. Kevin McGordy. Great to hear Mark on the waves. That's Mark McCartan with me. He's watching in Edinburgh. And of course, Kevin McGordy was man of the match when Queen's last won the Sigerson in 2007. And who did they beat? Ulster University. Not that I should give a Queen's man an opportunity to talk too much about that. But Mark, what a player he was and what a great final he had. Yeah, I remember I was at the final. Um, and in fairness... Kevin was quite quiet in the first 15 minutes and then he just went out and caught a ball and he was magnificent after that like uh, now it went to extra time if I remember rightly and uh, you know it was just it was uh, my cousin Daniel Captain Queens that day and it was a great day and that was the last time Queens actually won it uh, Kevin on his day was a phenomenal footballer great hurler too of course uh, was on the Adam Hearn squad for a while as well that's called returning the compliment. Yes, absolutely. No, I know Kevin quite well. He's a good lad. Who else have you got to mention there for on yours? Oh, yes. Uh, so give a shout out to John Kerr. He's watching at home with his feet up, resting a bad ankle. He's just recovering from a past injury. Um, if they tell him, he'll be back stronger soon. You keep an eye on any switches at the start of the second half. Will I go to the play and try to get through one last comment? No, I won't get there because Sean Hurston looks like he's about to throw the ball in for the second half. Sean Hurston, the referee. Eights and nines out in the middle, so no changes there. They had a right old battle in the first half. Lots of feisty stuff around in the middle, and the referee says, hold on there. And that is Tiernan Bogue, the captain, who's a little bit too anxious. Ball thrown in, and it's won there by Oren Murdoch. It dropped nicely for him. He gives it to his midfield partner. He gives it to Aidan Donaghy. And it's now Ulster University playing from right to left, and they get it in there to Connor Cush who had a good first half. We had lots of stats in the first half from the Statsman, the GA Statsman. Not too many differences between the teams, apart from the scores, really. Maybe a little bit more winning on the kickout, shall we say, for Ulster University. And there's obviously reasons for that, but it's a tight, close game. Uh, yeah, the stats were pretty much even. Uh, Joe, you're absolutely right. Uh, the one that did stand out was uh, the fact that uh, uh, I was going to say Jordanstown, but of course they're not Jordanstown anymore. No, I, I keep going to do that. It's yeah. tough. It's tough. Uh, th th they had won more more kickouts uh, compared to Queens, and it wasn't massive. I think it was eighty percent to seventy percent. So, uh, but it's great there that you would have that stats man doing that. Uh, check him out on Twitter. They're very good. Well, I know. don't have him doing it. He sent them in. No, fair, no, fair play to him for putting it up. But <laughs> fair play to him. But it shows the interest in the game as well, and lots of enthusiasts out there too. Now it's also University in possession, and it's Queens just dropping in. Yeah, and that man Canavan's on the field, uh, number 23. Oh, yes, so he is. Um, See him now. So let's there he is in the shot. Yeah, no, uh, fabulous footballer. I'm really looking forward. I think it's the first time I've seen him live. Yeah, you've seen plenty, and you've seen his brother throwing a few shapes as well. But interesting that they've thrown him in there. That's him on the ball. Now, I wonder, well, he's quick just moving the ball, nice and slick, and that's what you need to do as well. I'd say they've maybe been told to move the ball a little bit quicker, a little bit more energy about their play. And Canavan just playing around the middle there, and he's going to be available if it comes back out. But he's not needed there because it's put over the bar by the man from Irvinstown. It's Josh Largo. Ellis, what a score. I didn't mention his name at all in the first half because I would definitely remember that name. But super score from distance. And they're doing to Queens what Queens did to them at the end of the first half by scoring from distance. Yeah, it was a great score. Uh, former Fermanagh footballer played for Fermanagh a few years ago. Uh, I think he's a medic. I know he caught, he's, I don't think he would be a medic in, at Jordanstown, but uh, played for them a few years ago. Looks like a really handy footballer. So that's the lead for Ulster University right at the start of the second half. So Queens have the hands on the ball now and they're going to try and engineer something to get from left to right they go all the way back to sean mccarthy from clan Aaron and armagh he's the number two for queen's university coming forward being faced up by kush so he goes inside cushion canavan that takes me right back to the <laughs> 90s yeah fam famous duo i know we used to always say these used to come together really yeah and 
that's tough tackling there by Oran Murdoch. But too tough, says the referee. It's going to be a free in, but well outside the zone for Queens. I have to go short with that one. On the Facebook live chat, or not Facebook, YouTube, Adam Connolly says, Connell Devlin from our bow could do a lot of damage for us University if he gets the chance. Well, there's two or our uh, Conal Devlin's and the subs, by the way, from two different clubs in Tyrone. Oren Mallon and Jermyn Baker keeping Queen's ticking over here. And Tiernan Bog, another superstar, says Adam. Well, he certainly has had a good game so far. You can see why he's captain of that team. That one's spilled, and look at that. No pulling back, full commitment going for that ball on the ground there. And in the end, it's going to be a free in. He touched it on the ground. Yeah, saw free to give away. And in the scoring zone, probably something that... Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, there was a bit of a tackle there too, Jerome. Um, is, the, is he all right there? Who's at number six? I think six he there, is, yeah. yeah. But like I say, full commitment. There was no pulling out, and uh, he got us free. Uh, if you pull out in a Sigerson match, you won't be on the field too much <laughs> longer. I'll tell you, the managers will have you off. It's just that sounds like something you heard from the like of a Paddy O'Hara or Sean O'Neill back in the day, and, and <laughs> maybe even before your time, but you know what I mean. Uh, well, well, I wasn't managed by them, but every Queen's match I ever played, from fresher right the way through, Paddy O'Hara, uh, Sean O'Neill and Father Ambrose McCauley were at <laughs> three great Queen's stalwarts. As we have Tommy Joe Farrell, of course, there, I was talking to him before the match, a great uh, University of Ulster. Uh, well, if you go right back, I mean, the, uh, 1959, I think, was maybe Queen's first Sigerson. Sean right. O'Neill, Paddy O'Hara right back then, and we're yeah. still talking about them all these years later. Yeah, well, Sean, uh, of course, was on the team of the century and team of the millennium. Uh, wonderful, wonderful footballer. I remember him playing for Down uh, as a youngster. Uh, He's played from 59 to 76. Wow. Uh, so uh, you can just imagine. Of course, he, he won one or two All-Stars. He was on the first couple of All-Star teams. That's right, yeah. Absolute legend, yeah. Now it's also University on the attack down that right-hand side. I'd say Sean's here tonight. In fact, I'm, I don't even need to go looking for him. I know he's here tonight. But he was at the down match uh, on Yeah, Sunday. I saw that, yeah. But he'd never miss a Queen's game. No. Now, we have 3,100 devices watching this game from all over the place and they're watching a fascinating game that's going to swing in you know and i think it's going to go over the bar like the one on the first half and it does go over that is a wonder point from oran murdoch from burren and county down it nearly had snow on it by the time it came down but he judged it beautifully and that's for the first time in the game giving them a two-point lead oran murdoch is uh, capable of absolutely anything uh, you just seen him there he uh he won that ball, went and got it himself, and after scoring that wonderful point, he, I think he's still, I think he's still under twenty this year, so uh, an absolute beast of a man. And of course, his father Gavin won an All Ireland medal with Down in '94. There was a man hanging off him too, and he still yeah. managed to swing it over. Strong man indeed. Looked like a third point in a row there for Ulster University, but it dropped short. So Queens, two points down, but or one point down, is it? Yeah, uh, one point down, seven points. Oh, yeah, of six. course, I got a score a minute ago. Sorry, yeah. I've got mixed up there. I just noticed that on the screen. Apologies. Seven to six it is, but they're not in the game as much as they were in the start of the first half, now at the start of the second. But they're trying to do something about that, and they love feeding this low ball in there, and it's a great ball in as well because it's well taken by Purcell. And he's got men hanging off him, and they eventually get the ball off him too. Yeah, it was a great, great hand in there. Uh, he just waited until the ball was in the air, put the hand in. Uh, textbook, any young players watching that. And here's Murdoch again. And look at the room he has. That's unusual. That hasn't happened much in this game. That's when we usually say the game's opening up a little bit. Maybe Queen's just not filtering back with quite as much intensity as the word that you were mentioning earlier on this is a chance here for carl gallagher the guy i was mentioning at halftime from emmyville and county monaghan but they're forced to go back out again and that's gallagher number 12 who gives and then spins away and they're going to come back out now to james donaghy and he's going to slip it to edon donaghy this is the sort of range these boys are capable of scoring from and if you get closer they definitely will score and this is jones he's got one already it slips from his grasp slips it in it's there it's ended up in the net i don't know quite how it's ended up in the net but it has and it's a goal for ulster university at the home of queens we'll get another look at it seven minutes into the second half that could be a crucial score he's a grandson of iggy jones he got a point early on looks to have lost it and just toe poked it and then it looks actually was it the number five or number 15 luke donnelly's 15 and rory donnelly is five one of them, it looks like, got a boot on the end of it, and that could be a crucial score tonight. Yeah, look, that that could actually set Jordanstown up really well here. But watch, Queens are coming back here. Good response. 
Yep, they're inside the scoring zone as we talk, and they might even be inside the goal zone, and it's Sean McCarthy, slips it brilliantly, and it's a goal at the other end for Luke Donnelly for Queen's. The man from Eglish has scored. There's Tyrone men all over the pitch scoring goals at either end. And that's a brilliant reply from Queen's. It looked like Jordanstown had put down a marker there and taken a huge lead in this game. But Queen's right back in it. Yeah, look, it looked like Jordanstown had, had sort of got control of the game. Uh, and then a wonderful uh, dummy fake of losing the ball actually to get it into... Uh, into McCarthy, uh, the number McCarthy. two. Uh, no, no, the Jordanstown goal. Uh, oh, yeah, sorry, yeah. yeah. The Jordanstown goal and then... Uh, Great movement up the pitch, and I suppose you're always vulnerable after you score a goal. You, you, you know, they say that the two minutes after goal, that's you're most likely to concede a goal, and it just proved the fact there. Yeah, they got through well there, and that's kept this game alive because I was fearing there that Queens might sort of drift a little bit out of the game. That's yeah, there's a tasty tackle there. That was uh, Higgins, was it? Let's have another look and make sure. There's the. Number five, no, that is Jones going forward. He's been going forward Higgins. a lot, and yeah, it is Higgins. And now we haven't seen a card so far. We were talking about that earlier. This will be a card. Yeah, definitely be a card. Now we'll just have to see uh, what the, the color is. is it? Normally, when you, if you see the referee talking to him, it's normally a yellow. If they don't talk, there's a level of no, it's a yellow card. Yeah, I think he does, there's, there's no question it was a card. No question it was a card. It was a, it was a, a poor tackle, really. Yeah, it's not what you want to see. And, and in fairness, the game has been played, well, it's been played hard, you know, it's been played in fairly good, uh, you know, teams have been, both teams have been given it, but they've been taking it as well and getting up and going on and there's been no real nonsense, which is great to see. Sean Hurston hops the ball then, Queen's right back in it, they were four down, they're back to just one down. And as you say, Mark, that's a good point, you know, if you get a score just when they're relaxed just ever so slightly that's an important time to get it so it'll give them a little bit of a boost as well that's a nice diagonal ball on us beautifully watched as well and taken and this could be an equalizer and he has put it over and that has to go down as a defensive error there because they went for that and weren't able to stop it and Luke Donnelly who got yeah. the goal and has now got a point and he's brought his team level yeah Luke Donnelly's on fire at the moment you know in basketball terms give it to the, the guy on fire give it to the shooter uh, great score and you know the game seemed to be moving away from Queens but my goodness it shows great character that they went you know what we're not we're not going to lie down we're just going to go straight back at it and uh, it's been, been a bit of a scoring burst it's been great good ball there too out of defence as well yeah. I like that sort of diagonal ball there and it sort of caught out the defender he wasn't able to face up to it just quite as well and Donnelly judged it brilliantly so we're level again and I thought you know, Ulster University had made the best start in the second half. They looked to be in control. They brought Canavan on. They got their goal. They were very much in the driving seat. But all credit to Queen's the way they come back at this. Well, well Jerome, do you know what happens too? Teams get tired. I and mean, when teams get tired after that intense first half, space opens up. Oh, this man loves driving into empty, uh, space. And he's got a free. He's drawn a free. And he was over the other side, wasn't it? I think he was fouled a minute ago. And he's come over yeah. here and he created the goal. And now he's won a free. That's brilliant work by the number five, Ryan Jones from Dungannon Clarks. Yeah, no, he, he's he's actually stepped up a level the second half. He's causing all Queens all sorts of problems. It was him set up the goal. He's got the free here. Uh, he's definitely playing at a different level than he was in the first half. And Connor Cush will put that over yeah. easily enough. But do you know what it is? It's like Gilmore in the first half. It's the yeah. player who can break the line, That's right. who can get through in behind and keep his composure in there. They're the players who are being rewarded in this game, and they're making a difference. Yeah, no, it's definitely a far more uh, open uh, second half. Um, and I suppose well, the balls went out there. Uh, well, if you look at it, 11 and a half minutes, yeah. and we've already had two goals and five points yeah. in the second half. Yeah. And I think it's going to get a little bit more open as the game goes on, and we'll see a few more subs as well. We haven't seen much of Canavan so far. Obviously, they're going to be watching him closely, but you see him sitting out there, and he's been watched by Matthew Murnahan, and he's a Tyrone man as well, and they're very wary of him. They're just keeping him out around that area, but if he sneaks in there as well, he is now could cause a bit of damage now it's coming here is Canavan first real effort and he goes for his own score but the keeper comes out and takes it quite easily that's good work by Brian Cassidy in there it was an important take in fairness because the, the Jordanstown player sorry the University of Ulster player was there and it could have been a goal he'd done very well the goalkeeper and you're doing very well with the Jordanstown references as well. And I just slipped one in there as well. But they'll really know your age if you start calling them the Polly. 
I went to a poly, you know, back in the day. Not that poly. Is but that right? There's, no, no, there's not really any of them around anymore. Anyway, this is Queens now with Caelan Freel from Balaha. I hadn't mentioned him so far, but he has done a lot of good work. And he's now got a man off the shoulder there, and it's the fullback. It's Lorcan McBride coming forward, and that's an audacious effort from distance. He's put snow on it. It might go over. You know what? It has gone over. <laughs> what a score at the start. Oh, to come back into this game and level it again. And this is turning into a really, really tense game. And it's tit for tat. And these two are going for it. And it's going to come down to the last quarter. That's a great score. That's a super score. Look, this second half has been fantastic, Jerome. You know, people say that, you know, football and it's gone defensive and all. But my goodness, when you see scores like that, when you see two goals, particularly the second goal, the quality. But the movement for the first goal was great. There's yeah, a substitute know. now. 17's coming in for Ulster University, and that's Ryan Convery from Portland Known Casements. I told you to watch out for him. Yeah, you did. I also see number 14 is going off, Oren Mallon for Queens. He has gone off the field uh, over on the far side. I don't know if that's a switch. Number four has gone off for Ulster University. That's Rory Slain from Carrick Moore. So definitely saw 14, and 17 yeah. seems to be on. No, that is 17. So it's 17 for 14 yeah. for Queens. Is that the, is that the switch? Am yeah. I reading that right? Peter McGrain from uh, Ballyhagan Davids. That's the one. I wonder if that's anything to Paul McGrain. I'm not sure. Um, same club. Same club, same name. I presume that it would be a son. Uh, Paul, of course, was a great Queens stalwart back in the day. I think he has at least one, if not two, Sigerson medals with Queen. So he's in for Malin, just to yeah. be clear. And it's Convery who's in for Ulster University. And here's a free. And it's Canavan going to take it. Yeah, and Canavan is. converts to put Ulster University in front by a point. And it is turning into a really good contest. This, this, and it's really, really close. And this has been by far the best quarter of the game so far. Yeah, no, it's definitely... Uh, Enjoyability-wise, it's definitely went up a level, um, and, and again, it's very, very even. Neither teams land down, and both are going to going for it. This is Murdoch for also University, playing with a little bit of a swagger, not any rush at all, and a little bit of a back heel there. He stood in the ball, but it hasn't worked because Queens have got it back. Rory Donnelly, and they've got their tenacity levels up. Queens, they were four down, but they're right back in this game, and they're not afraid to take it to us University and there's a nice ball into the forwards as well oh, nearly got it, nearly took it and it's come back out to Finnegan can Finnegan get it can he get down on it he does he does well but he's under serious pressure and releases it and the referee says there's a push there and he's actually given a free to us University and Paddy's a little bit perplexed and I have to say I am a little bit too I'm not sure what happened there no he possibly would give it for throwing the ball oh though, maybe that's what it was uh, yeah, yeah. yeah but I felt Jordan's time were unlucky just down here to our left Jerome uh, uh, you know, I thought that they should have had a free in. Well, actually, now you mentioned I'm taking that back about Sean Hurst, and it was a uh, throw ball. You're absolutely right. This is McGill driving at the heart of the defence, and that's trying to curl in from Andrew Gilmore. He just hasn't managed to do it. But it was interesting away from that sideline ball or that free over here on the sideline that Canavan came looking for it. He certainly did, and it was a straight ball, one of the more difficult balls to take. Took it really well. Give it to the man going past, and it was a good move, and it was unlucky from Gilmore. One nine plays one eight. We're in the last quarter of this game. Electric Ireland Sigerson Cup from the Dub Arena in Belfast, courtesy of the Higher Education GEA Committee, who have identified this game, which wasn't too hard to do, as the game of the round, and they have put it on show tonight to showcase the best skills. And they have made a great decision there because there are a lot of great footballers out there and they are really showing and it's going to go right down to the wire and there's an audacious effort again from the right-hand side and he's yeah. got it. No, he hasn't. It's just gone to the left. I thought that was over the bar from Luke Donnelly. He scored 1-1 in the last 10 minutes or so. I thought that was over, Mark. I, I, it looked over to me, but obviously the umpires are in a better position than me. Uh, but I see there that... Uh, Number 21, Arden McAvoy from Bourne is back on for Queens. And number 19's in now as well. Finton Canavan, you mentioned him. He's yeah. Brian's for Brian's the county down. Yeah, really good, athletic, strong player. Uh, very, very strong on the run. And he can take a, he can take a score as well. He's a and it is Murnahan who's gone off, the, who he came on as a blood sub for uh, earlier on, or who the other guy came on as a blood sub for. So they eventually had to take Murnahan off. Also University on the attack now, and it's their number seven. It's a Fermanagh man again. They've slipped it inside, and there's a goal on here. He puts it over the bar instead of under. 
Adon Donaghy from Lock McCrory elects to take the point when a goal was on. Let's have another look at it here. It's gone to 110 to 18, but it could have been easily a goal. He stepped inside there and a great dive across there from the defender. Maybe just put him off, but signs that this game is really, really opening up and the next five minutes will be crucial. And you get the feeling that Queens need to hit back. And they are in danger, though, of being hit on the break because also University of Canavan on there now and they're moving really slick. And when they have a little bit of room up there, they might get through for another goal. But Queens are certainly holding their own and hanging in there. They're two points down, but you feel that they need to get a score or two here. Now, Jordanstown have done it again. Also, University are sitting in there. They have their structure in there and they're being disciplined and Queens are going to have to find something a little bit special. No, there's, there's, there's no doubt there. Jordanstown, again, they just seem to be just stepping ahead of Queens, but there we go. And that's white. White, yeah. Yeah, it's unlucky now. I did say they need something special, yeah. but Bogue there fancied it from distance. He put one over in the first half, but just didn't quite measure it. And it's, it's a two point game, 12 minutes to go, Mark. Look, it is close, but the, you get the feeling at the match oh, what a kick out, what a fabulous kick out. And there's room here, and he's through again. It's that man, Aidan Donaghy. He got through for a goal. He's storming forward, and he's not been followed as well as he was earlier on. But he hasn't got through. And as you say, brilliant kick out. But is that Canavan trying to get in behind there? And they fed it back out. It's a slick passing, I've noticed, in the second half. They're moving the ball faster there and quicker in the tackle as well. Look, lovely quick passing there. They're not being caught in the tackle. And is that going to go over from there? Now, surely that's left, and it is going to the left and wide. Yeah, well, again, it's the, 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 the last two shots there, one from Jordanstown, one from Queen's, both came from outside the scoring zone. You have to get the ball into the scoring zone, especially on a windy night. It's just too difficult. You know, Queen's in particular, they've been shooting from outside. The last two attacks Queen's have had, with a, a shot from 45 metres and a shot from wide on their right-hand side, you know, they need to score. I suppose with Jordanstown, you know, a wonder score puts them three points up you know, it gives them a wee cushion. But Queens need to be a wee bit more settled. Now there's one that's gone over the top and there's a race for possession. He needs to win this one for his team, but that's good defending there. I thought it was actually, is it um, Owen McDonald, Mullabon? No, he's on the other team. It's the other number 20. It's personal for Queens. Yeah. I thought he was favourite to win that and then didn't. And uh, it's Maybe just a wee bit of strength there uh, from the Jordanstown defender. Yeah, I think that was it. I'd also I see, I think Cush went off there, who's the free taker for Ulster University, but he, I think, went off the field there. I'm almost sure I saw him going off. So another change there. There's a lot of changes at the minute. I'll follow the play and see if you can spot anything else. But this is the fullback up here again. McBride fancies it again. That's a great ball inside, and it's brilliantly taken. And it is that man, number 20 again, Purcell, who won that and held on to it, and he got his mark. And we haven't seen that too often, but no. he's done that brilliantly. No, he took that really well. I was actually looking around. Uh, Conor McCrickard's come on. I haven't seen his number, but I'm pretty sure it's him. You've been waiting for him all night. He is a quality player. <laughs> and he, he's an even better hurler. You want to see him play hurling. He's an absolute fabulous hurler as well. That's a great score by Purcell. Yeah, that was, was all his work. And, you know, they've had, yep. they've had trouble winning the ball inside, but that gives him a bit of hope. They're only a point down, 10 minutes to go. They're right in this game. They certainly are. You know, Jordanstown seem to have better players, but Queen's seem to be slightly better organised. Uh, maybe I don't know if that's if, if whatever it is. Maybe the Queen's players, there's more, more, more chance of them getting training together. This is Gallagher, and it's Canavan on the left foot, but it's just gone to the right and it's just gone wide. And I just get the sense that Ulster University have more of a threat of scoring a goal yeah. in the last five or six minutes, but they haven't. And Queen's are still right at them. <laughs> Queen's still. are just plugging away, aren't they? They're yeah. just not letting. They're that. They're that dogged team that just will not let you away and look the game's still in the mountain pot because oh what a catch by the captain Tiernan Bogue now, he's certainly not giving up the ghost but that's a poor ball his man didn't quite read that and instead this is Caelan McColgan from Donegal and he's storming forward he's inside the 45 what's he doing up there he fancies it does he know in the end he switches it instead and says well I'll maybe not I'll give it out to somebody else here who plays closer to goal and he give it to that man Conor McCrickard and Canavan involved there as well and this is the corner forward Gilmore and he has got a lot of company there and he's managed to just about hold possession that's happened a lot in this game but Queen's might have just turned him over on this occasion and the referee eventually has awarded is he giving a free in? Giving a free in yeah uh, 
Gilmore, they seem to have they, they realised at half time, they've obviously talked about Gilmore. Every time Gilmore's got the ball in the second half, he's been surrounded, drawn by two or three players, and he just hasn't got the space. He hasn't he hasn't had the influence on the game in the second half that he did in the first half. But, but it looked like they're they'd done the job, the Queen's yeah. defenders, and then they fouled him. Yeah, That's the frustrating bit, I'm sure. Yeah, it is. But having said that, because they're concentrating so much on him, it's given the likes of Canavan and a few of the others, Jones, for example, coming in at half back, and Oren Murdoch out the field. Well, could you them imagine you're at half time you know? and their management saying, Do you watch that guy kill more? <laughs> and then you go out to the second half and Derek Hannibal standing beside you. <laughs> and then McCrickard comes on. But that's well, that's the thing that Ulster University managed to do. They have the big names, but they're still only a point ahead. And that's low. They have to watch it all the way. And he took a swing at it, and it's going to be a free out. He really did take a swing at it, McCrickard, there, but he didn't connect with the ball. No, he wanted a hurling stick there. He <laughs> might have been able to get a, a, wee, a wee poke on it. We'll see again what happens here. It's surprising that he, he, he did. was that kind of, and he didn't connect at all right there. But it was there to be kicked at. And there's going to be a bit of treatment required, but that could have put the lights out here in the dub arena, but it hasn't. It looks like he, he's caught him on the fingers because he's holding his hand there. Uh, well, I keep saying they're still in it. There's only one point in it. This game is still there for Queens, and never mind the rest of the Sigerson Cup, they would be delighted just to win this game tonight. And they've, they've got themselves into the right position. I mean, you hear talk these days of a five-minute game and, uh, you know, stay in it until the last five minutes and then you can you can go for glory. Yeah, no, absolutely. Look, Queens will want to win this, but it's, they're like every other team. If you win this one, you want to try and win the next one and then you want to get on a run and see where you go after that. Ah, look, if, if Queens beat Ulster University here, they'll be talking about it for years. <laughs> but never mind what they do later. It's like a, we, we beat you in that game. I mean, it's 12 years since you played in the Sigerson, which is surprising because they used to meet nearly every year, it seemed. Well, Queens. there's a lot more teams in the Sigerson now. Yeah, true, than there is. true. That's true. Queens University on home territory in the Dub Arena in the Electric Ireland Sigerson Cup. They're one point down, six minutes to go. Looking for an equaliser. The ball's with the right man, it's with the captain. He takes responsibility. He has been inspirational tonight from Tempo Maguire's in Fermanagh. Tiernan Bogue, is he gonna level it? He puts it very, very high and it's gonna draw just to the left. I give him a big build up and it, the wind, I think, just carried it away, Mark. Uh, yeah, the wind, as I've said, I've said all night, the wind's blowing that way and it's just pulled out to the left. But you're absolutely right, he's had an immense second half. He is, him and two or three others have kept Queens right in this game. He's a really good footballer. Uh, I'm not sure if he's in the Fermanagh panel or not, but I'm sure they'll be looking at him after tonight. Serious long kick out from Oren Lynch, but it was brilliantly taken for Queens. Great catch, and here they go again, and Bogue has it. They are taking the game. He's well inside the 45, so he says he'll try it. Has he drifted? Oh, it's gone to the left. That's frustrating, but it's still in. It's still there, and they might even get more out of it. And they don't. They're forced out. They've just opened up for a minute, but they might have an equaliser, and I think they do. It's Queen's University level, and it is Peter McGrain from Ballyhagen Davids, a famous name in that club, and in Armagh, and in Queen's, and he's levelled at four minutes to go, 110 to 110. Talking about a dogged score, not, like, not giving up, fighting for a ball that looked like to be got, and it was lost again and they want it back again. It's just the sheer doggedness of Queens. They're just not letting Jordanstown get away from them at all. It kind of sums them up tonight, doesn't yeah, it? it? That, does. that it really one does. score. Yeah. But we're not over yet. We have four minutes or so of normal time. And it's Ryan McGill going forward. And has he got a score? No, he's put it in there, but it's brilliantly taken under the crossbar, not by the goalkeeper, but trying to see his number in there. Um, not quite sure who it was, but I will give him a credit. I'm going to follow him. I'm trying to follow the ball as well because I want to give him a credit. He was in the right place at the right time. And he stopped McGill there from getting the score to put Ulster University back in front. Queens have worked hard to get back in the game. And now they're actually looking for a winner. And do you know who it was in there? It was Sean McCarthy from Clan Aaron who's on the ball now. It was him who caught that ball in yeah. there. I think he's the only Armagh man, apart from the Valley Hagen man, on the field, and he has done really well. Yeah, Fenton Canavan got a tackle in just at the right time, too, to, to make sure that McGill didn't get the ball uh, struck properly. Queen's fancy this, you know. Rory Donnelly giving it forward. The referee thought about it, but Queen's have the ball and they're through. They might take the lead here as he popped it over. He has, you know, and Queen's University are in the lead for the first time in a long time. And it was the corner back. It was the Baker from Derry. Jeremy Baker from Steelstown in Derry City has put the home team, sneaked them into the lead. 111 to 110 with three minutes to go. 
Well, in fairness, that's his second score. He scored a really good point in the first half as well. He's, he's obviously very comfortable going forward. Of course, he would have had the experience of playing in the All-Ireland Final uh, in the Intermediate Club last year. So he's played in Crow Park and also the experience is standing well to him. I know, he's on the way to a Baker's dozen. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't resist, couldn't resist, sorry. Three minutes to go, One eleven to one ten. Queens have got themselves in front. They've put it up to Ulster University and Liam Downey from Ford Lane. And Derry gives it out to Oren Mallon. I'm getting, me, no, I'm getting mixed up actually. Do you know what? That's number seven for the other team. Sorry about that. I just looked down and got the wrong numbers, the wrong team there. It was Ben McCarran, of course, because I realised the other number 14 had gone off. Ulster yeah. University with a free, and it's Ryan Jones, and he has been one of the players of the match, and we will get to that stage. We'll take your contenders, by the way, for player of the match. So leave a message there in the live chat on YouTube to say who you thought has been the best player at tonight, and we'll have a chat about it at the end. In the end is nigh we're only a few minutes away it's tense here our queen's university going to win a famous victory here tonight there's a man going off over the far side actually didn't quite catch his number they've gone short and canavan is there and he's alert and he's ready and he's on the ball he tries to slip it inside but he's forced out wasn't able to get the score and of course famously his dad and his uncle pascal played with st mary's back in the day and pascal is the only one of the two who won a Sigerson. Yeah, they beat us in the semi-final. We won't talk about that, Jerome. No, no, it's grand. <laughs> but, yeah, he has the bragging rights there. But uh, that was the new generation of Canavans trying to do something for his team there with that short. But instead, it's Queens at the other end. This is Finnegan, Paddy Finnegan, and he drops it off to Purcell. And he's kicked that high, but it's, it's going to stay in, you know. That could still be dangerous. This is what happened a minute ago. And it's broken. And it's Caelan Freel, the man from Balahi. And he has possession there now. And Queens are trying to sneak along the end line. And he might get in. Is he going to score? Oh, he somehow put it over. I thought it was going to be a goal, but they will take a point. And it was Finton Canavan from Brentsford and County Down. And it's now a two-point lead for Queens. And they have come right back into this game. They were four down at one stage. And full credit to them they are now on the verge of a famous win yeah you, you wouldn't have called this halfway through after the first quarter Joan we were both saying that Jordanstown looked the most or sorry the University of Ulster uh, looked the most likely well surely um, you know when the goal went in it was yeah. four in it oh here it's not over yet oh no they stopped it but yeah. yeah it's been quite a turnaround and you know Ulster University brought on this man they brought Canavan on so Queens yeah. will love this if they can hold out here and claim this win I wonder what Conor McCrae regret taking that short free to Calvin there. You know, if he had put it over the bar, it was a, a drawn game. Or, or the goal chance that Donaghy, the number eight, yeah. had. He put it over the bar and it looked like he might put it under. But it was the diving block that put him off. You know, it was yeah. that serious commitment from Queen's that we yeah. came across him. But it's not over yet. We aren't even an added time. Nearly are. There's a serious effort from distance. But it's gone to the left from Ronan McCaffrey, the man from... Timor in for Mana and that but a bit more composure needed there Jerome. yeah it you looked know. like a wee bit of desperation there from, from that sort of distance and they, at this stage they needed to make sure yeah you know Queens were doing that earlier on in the half Do you remember they had a couple of shots from probably outside where they should have been shooting from and instead that you know they, they put it in there you know it's uh, and here's this man Higgins getting the ball balls out uh, Freel there tried to get it but he's nearly gone over the barrier and it's going to be a sideline ball for also University Sorry. and Queens have really really wanted this tonight you're doing what I did <laughs> your number 10s and 12s mixed up yeah it's easy to do but here this is Aidan Donaghy also University and they say a two-point lead is a terrible lead to have because it means there's it happened here last night by the way Queens beat down they were two down last attack of the game to score a goal and won it and that's swung by Ben McCarran to the right and left yeah, and again, probably shooting with his left foot from the left side with the wind blowing across. Oh, yeah, he got a great one early on, though. No, he did, he did. But, you know, Jordanstown need to be composed. They need to get the ball in. There's, what, 61 minutes. It's getting, it's actually getting the stage. They're going to have to go for a goal, Joe. They're going to have to go for a goal, you know. I don't think there's been that many stoppages in the second half, so I say you're looking at maybe two minutes. Well, you, they're supposed to add 20 seconds on for every substitute, but I don't know if that always happens. It only happens in the World Cup, doesn't it, out in Qatar? Aye, well, they add about six minutes on for every I substitute know. out there. They're still going. That might be a point, should be a point. Have they got it back to a one-point game? They have, just to add to the tension here. One-point game. I haven't mentioned the words time and extra in the other order that they're usually mentioned in but there is a possibility referee blows is he holding is there a substitution or something yeah no. I think it's um, no. Keelan Freel is no is he going off no he's not he's just hovering over in that area but it's a one point game now 112 to 111 and we're in injury time so 
as you say, there's probably about a minute, two minutes left at the very most. Queen's on the verge, but Ulster University have won it. That's Murdoch out and around the middle of the field. They're looking for an equaliser here, and he gives it to McGill, the down man. But it's been turned over, and that's brilliant work by Queen's in there. It looked like Ulster University were going to steam through the middle, but they have been defiant all night, Queen's. They have stood up to their illustrious neighbours and they have come through and they have been dogged, they have been persistent and they have been brilliant on the counter attack as well and they lead this Electric Ireland Sigerson Cup game by a point deep into injury time, now they're trying to hold possession and claim the victory in the Dub Arena, these two teams have not met in the competition for 12 years 12 long years, they've put on an exhibition tonight, but it's Queen's who have the upper hand at the minute they are holding on to it, 112 to 111, Ulster University are having to press, are having to chase but it's with Sean McCarthy, the man from Clan Aaron in Armagh and he com is composed back there and holds possession they're running down the clock you can see the white jerseys going towards them but they're being sucked in and then the pop ball over the top is from the goalkeeper Brian Cassidy and Queens are playing really nice football here but there is a challenge off the ball that the referee has spotted and that is going to be penalised not just by a free but by a card as well and that could be costly of Ulster University get up here you see it again here yeah. Mark what happened well he's, oh, oh yeah yeah no he caught him with a short arm by the looks of it he, he, he could be in trouble here now um yeah, it's just yeah. Callum O'Hare. I mean, O'Hare. it's interesting. And he's, you know, he's worked hard all night. He's he's put his weight around. But what, uh, what no, colour is this going to be? Yeah, could be black. I think he's talking to him, so I think it'll be yellow. I always think if the referee's talking to you, he's going to give you a yellow. Yeah, but he looks a bit disappointed as well. Yeah, it could be a black actually. It could I, be a black because yeah, he, it's one of those it was away the from the ball. Yeah, 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 it's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a black. A, it's a black. So now if it does go to extra time, Queens will have seven, eight minutes, maybe nine, nine minutes with without, uh, without a player. Mm, that was unnecessary, shall we say, but it was, you know, yeah. you can understand the rush of blood out there at the same time. Yeah, and, and Jordanstown are pressing everybody up, goalkeepers, not one player in the Jordanstown half of the field at the moment. 65th minute. Ben McCarran gives it way out to the side to McColgan, but there's lots of green shirts around. Queens are protecting their lead. They want to hold on to this, but it's a one-point game. They get it out to Canavan. Canavan, will he take responsibility? Tries to move it quickly, and the wonder effort is coming in, and it's going surely over the bar. No, it drops short. It drops short. It doesn't quite make it. And that was from Niall Lachlan from Greenlock, and the whistle goes, and Queen's have claimed a famous and dramatic victory here. They have beaten Ulster University in the Electric Ireland Sigerson Cup first round. They hadn't met for 12 years, but Queen's University dug it out in the end against their illustrious neighbours and they've claimed a famous victory and you have to say they deserved it but both teams have put on an exhibition here tonight people all over the world watching this game it's showcased the game there's over 4,000 devices watching at the end of this game they have enjoyed it I'm sure and we have enjoyed it as well and Mark McCartan how would you sum up that night well you know I just think Jordanstown are, are sorry University of Ulster undoubtedly have the better players but we talked all night about Queen's just hanging in there, staying in touch. And at times when Jordanstown played, they were phenomenal. But at times when Queen's played, they played some really good football as well. And when they moved the ball, when both teams moved the ball quickly, kept it out of contact, there were some great scores. We also had some wonder scores from both teams. We had goals, we had actions. The second half was a fantastic game of football, Joe. Absolutely fantastic game. The first half was intense. It was, it was hard, it was tough. And you know what, a great advertisement for, for Sigerson football and some great performances, you know, from, from players on both sides of the of the of the of both teams tonight. Bragan rights go to Queen's University against Ulster University in this Belfast derby. We had nearly 65 minutes, and if you include five minutes at the end of the first half, that's about 70 minutes. And it was quality stuff all the way through. As you say, it had a bit of everything. We're going to go for a player of the match, and I am going to give you a few contenders from people who are watching. Ryan Jones got a mention. Dan Higgins, Peter McGrain got a mention. Podrick Purcell got a mention as well. And by the way, there's John McSorley and Shane Bulger watching in New York. And Cormac Power as well says, um, oh, he's mentioning something else actually, but I'm just trying to see what else there is. Oh yeah, there's one or two others have come in. And Caelan Freel has to be man of the match, but that might be a friend of his, I'm not quite sure. And we'll come back to Mark's decision in a minute. I'm just tipping up a few for you here and giving you something to think about. 
And yeah, those were all. Oh, Sean McCarthy gets a mention as well. He was the right cornerback for Queens. He had a super game as well. But it's over to you to give a few of contender, a few contenders, and a player of the match as well. As we watch Connor Deegan, your old mate from 1991 and 1994, in there, and he'll be a proud Down man and a proud Queens man. I know he didn't go to Queens, but he'll be proud of that team there tonight. No, Connor made a good, uh, a good speak today. He says that he never went to Queens, but uh, if he had, of he would have been the caretaker, which I found rather amusing. Which is very very typical of Connor if you know him he's very droll um, <laughs> look um, we'll start with the Jordanstown um, I thought uh, Ryan Jones particularly the second half when Jordanstown needed to be stepped up he started driving forward the same with Oren Murdoch uh, he, he had a good second half as well um, in the first half Gilmore was the outstanding player um, he, 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 he sort of won every ball that went into him for Jordanstown um, as far as Queens are concerned you know, the, the, again, there was a lot of good performances. I thought uh, Patrick Finnegan had a really good second half, uh, played really well. Um, uh, number four, Dermot Baker, not only was he good defensively, but he, he, he popped up the field with two points. But for just sheer tenacity and driving the team forward. Just look at it. We're looking yeah. at a few replay plays here while you're talking. This yeah. was Jones early on. Yeah. He had a super game, you're right. He I mean. really did, yeah. And both halves. Yes, no, he, he absolutely did, but I thought he was particularly good the second half. Uh, when Jordanstown needed him, he stepped up, he started driving forward with the ball, and he, he actually impacted the game. And there was a great score from the Queen's full forward as well. One had turned onto his left and put it over the bar. Like, as we say, there were some great scores here, Jerome. Well, that f- third quarter was fantastic. You know, you had the two goals in it as well, and that, that was a hard hit. Yeah. And then this man had his shooting boots on. He yeah, was putting Kush. over from all over the place, Kush. And, uh, Kush had a good game as well. Now that one was him. actually, was that over the bar or square? No, that was the square ball that was one. The square ball. But this, I think, was the point from the side as well. That was a lot. Was that McCarran? I think it was McCarran early on. Yeah, it was a super score. What about this here? This is Bogue now. He shaped, as I say, to shoot. He didn't, but it was a corner for yeah, it. Was was Baker. I mean, Baker's he, first score. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, second one I think it was maybe even better, better yeah. and then what about this from Bogue yeah. I, I, I would give Man of the Match to Bogue just because he was driving and when Queens needed him and when, when Queens weren't playing particularly well Bogue was out and he was he was winning the ball and he was pushing it forward and that's Murdoch just at yeah. the start of the second half <laughs> what a point that was yeah. as well I mean Look, I totally agree with you but this was uh, Jones again this Jones is the again, goal yeah. here. it's, um, it's five. five it is five he came in there so yeah. it was Ryan Jones yeah, Ryan Jones got yeah. the goal as well yeah. and the two points. And this is a goal right away. What was it, about a minute later? Yeah. Look, when you look back at it, Jerome, there was some great football player. There really was. was another hit. Oh, yeah, that was a But that as a you say, they, they give it and they took it, you know. Yeah. And there was a night, this is your man again, Donnelly, who got the goal, Luke Donnelly, and he got a point. And that was it level. And, you know, Donnelly in patches was fantastic. He probably didn't play consistently well throughout the match. But having said that, a corner forward has to have the ball. And sometimes if the ball's coming in, you can't blame him. So maybe I'm being a wee bit unjust yeah, on him, you know. That's he it. he I mean, played very just, well. They do well, and there he did well yeah, again. Us, or not, was personal, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, that, that was ball. Personal, And he put yeah. that over as well. That was, a, that was a crucial one when you think yeah. about it, you know. Yeah. Well, and, and that there, I mean, that could have had them level. But I was surprised, and was it kind of in there? And he didn't get the mm-hmm. the elevation on it. And this was a nearly, they nearly sneaked the goal here, actually, at the other end, Queens. Mm-hmm. And they that got was a point McGrain scored that one? Yeah, yeah. And, and look at this, it's the runners, you know, it was yeah. the runners that caused so much damage. Yeah. No, look, it, it was a really good game of football. And look, if anybody hasn't seen Sigerson before, I think it shows you the intensity. Yeah, can it? <laughs> if Finton had to hit that with his left yeah. foot, it was probably in the back of the exactly, net, you know? Exactly, yeah, 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 yeah. And as we said earlier, I wonder will But here, the one by a point. Yeah, oh, well, that was another bad tackle. Mm. I wonder mm. will, will uh, Conor McCricket regret... What is that about? Hitting, oh, that must have been beforehand, <laughs> was it? <laughs> no, I think that's now. Yeah, it's happening over there straight. Oh Do you know, I'm going to make one last comment. I mean, you're giving Bogue player of the match. Yeah. And do you know what he reminded me tonight? Roy Keane. Do you remember Roy Keane was at a game Ireland against Holland and right at the start of the game he tackled over Mars and I say tackled, <laughs> he nearly put him into the stand. Yeah. Tiernan Bogue in the first minute put in a challenge. Now I'm not condoning that sort of behaviour that you would go over the top but he laid down a marker and said for Queens we're here tonight and we're going to stand up to you guys and we're not going to take anything from you. We're not giving you, we'll give you respect as a team but we are going to give as good as we get here tonight and that to me was a message right through to the end. Look. As, as when I was playing with Queens a long time ago now, but when Jordan's Town or St Mary's came to the dub, we did not want to get beat. Unfortunately, we were a few times, but it was always talked about, guys. If they win, you know, we'll, we'll see them out later on. They'll come into the Students' Union, whatever. We don't want that happening. And Bogue, 
uh, you know, he, he just he's just typical. You know, it was it was a proper proper Sigerson performance. You know, I remember I've I've, I've seen people do it before uh, for Queens. We talked about Paul McRae. And I remember him playing. We talked about. Uh, 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 what he called Kevin McGordy, you know those sorts of performances. And Jordanstown had the players over the year as well. Uh, the the first year they won Sigerson down in down in Cork uh, they had Glass, uh, Cahill Glass, brilliant performance in the Dermot McNichol and those boy DJ Keane and you know to win Sigerson you need to have players like that. You know you need somebody who will put their put their head in where players wouldn't put their hands. He didn't get photo shoots like that right after a match in so your day. Anyway, there's no doubt about Flip that. I'll tell you, if I'd have lost a match like that, I wouldn't be standing out there. For photo no, no disrespect, Jerome, I'd be away. Uh, that's for the sponsors, Electric Ireland. I'd help by the yeah. tops there as well. And, yeah. of course, we wouldn't be here without them. So thanks to them as we finish up here and wrap it up tonight. And thanks to Higher Education GEA Committee for showcasing this game tonight. We hope you have enjoyed it. From the Dub Arena in Belfast, it's been live stream number 200 for myself and the team here with Patter and Mark. We hope you have enjoyed this particular one. It's been a great one to mark the 200th game with. It's been a victory for the home team for Queen's University in the Electric Ireland Sigerson Cup from a breezy, cool Dub Arena. It's goodbye.